Well, welcome back to Rally Croatia right now in the service park in the heart of Zagreb. Myself and Julia Negracia here to take you through what is the midday service. Now, this is a, another busy point for a co-driver, isn't it, Julian? Yeah, I, I, I cannot lie. This is a moment where we can still rest a little bit, at least have some food. That is always good, especially when you are French. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is a busy moment. OK, well, we're going to be working our way through the interviews. Bex Williams was also down in the media zone earlier on, grabbing lots of interviews. So we've got interviews with all the drivers and the team bosses. So we'll get to that in a minute. But Julian, what have you made of the morning so far? Myself. Mm. Well, we uh, went to the start of stage nine where we could uh, just uh, see the procedures, what happened uh, there, and everyone was a bit busy with the tires, uh, yeah. doing the tire pressures at small adjustments at the very last moment in front of the yellow board. Uh, and then also it's always very um, interesting to speak with uh, some people like uh, Rossell or FOMO uh, <laughs> in between the two stages where they were explaining me all their uh, issue troubles or sometimes just some jokes or normal things. Uh, Adrian was just telling me that uh, he uh, he's living in the same area of, uh, as me in, in the Jura, and he, oh, really? he, he bought uh, an old BMW just to make some slides during the winter. <laughs> so let's be honest, you were a distraction during the road section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good also to make the, 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 the mine uh, going a bit away. Now, talk to me about the weather, because we've been waiting for this elusive rain. It was freezing this morning. First thing this morning, like you were saying, at the top of stage nine, we could see our breath. It was so cold. Then it started to spit with rain between that road section between nine and ten. A few drops of rain, but wet tyres were taken, but no rain was seen. It's not that often that we have seen uh, on a WRC event uh, some so wrong predictions. I, I could not say even that because it means that the weather was really unpredictable. And having two wet tires in the boot, I can tell you that this is a pain in the A for, <laughs> uh, the, for the crews because we know that these tires is usable only in a certain window. And uh, I think this is Sabogier that had uh, one uh, uh, wet tire on the, on the rear right. Uh, he could not manage to do, to do uh, another way uh, indeed. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite surprised. and. Um, 
this is the first event that I see uh, so much um, different uh, opposition in the, in the predictions. Yeah, so much uncertainty with the weather. All right, well, we are standing outside M Sport currently. They are the first of the cars coming in. Gregor Munster in now. You've just seen uh, him coming past us. We'll work our way around and take a look at the service as well. But as we are here at M Sport and Gregor Munster has just pulled in, let's listen in to team boss Richard Milner as he spoke to Bex Williams a bit earlier on in that media zone. Rich, we were expecting a different day today. I'm sure you were as well, because we've been told by most of the drivers it was going to be a different rally with the weather. That hasn't hit yet. What are your meteo crews telling you? Are we going to see rain this afternoon? Uh, I think it's one of the things where everybody thought the same. It wasn't just one team, for example, but uh, it just goes to show how difficult it is to get everything right. You know, um, the, the, the weather forecast has changed dramatically in the last three or four days, um, and it's turned out today at the moment that we've had nothing, really. So could well be the same as this afternoon but you know in the afternoon when temperatures are changing and weather patterns change something could come from nowhere we've seen it here on this rally before where just something comes from nowhere or someone gets a deluge and, no, and the other people don't so it's still going to be another hard tyre choice and potentially you know you're going to need to take some some kind of option to cover you in case it does happen but that means it compromises the rest of the package so I'm sure it's not going to be an easy lunchtime again. Smile on the face of everyone at M Sport this morning when Formo took the stage win. I think we have to you know if, we don't, if we're not smiling then we're doing something wrong so yeah no a fantastic drive on that stage uh, he really enjoyed it um, and he's been close all the way through the loop so fantastic to watch him fairly fighting with everyone uh, around him. Yeah, it's been really good to watch. Uh, last day is a 39-year-old today, Rich Milliner. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow it's the big 4 hour. Everyone says it's downhill from there. So what's been the career highlight before it all goes wrong? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I can't even ask you a question. I'm just so frustrated that that's it. The end of the, end of the three. <laughs> The end of the 30. I'm on the downslope now. <laughs> <laughs> I get be it gets better from here, kid. Don't you worry. Good luck this afternoon out there. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> well, I think perhaps the best is yet to come with Adrian Formo this year with two podiums already. Who knows what on earth he can achieve throughout the rest of the season. So it might be a huge career highlight for Rich this year. Yes, I mean, all the efforts that M Spot uh, have put, has put in a way on Adrian all those years, uh, well, starts to, to pay, I, I, I would say. The road is very long, all the rallies are different, but you know my uh, point of view here in Croatia, this is among the most difficult rallies. So if Adrian and M Spot manage to go through the ambushes uh, here, uh, well, that's a good, good sign also because it means that everyone knows weakness and strengths. Here, maybe they were not the fastest so far, but just keep the position, bring some points, still make some experience around that, and then we will uh, reach and start the series of uh, gravel rallies until um, phew, until when? Until uh, European <laughs> rally, yeah. uh, Central European rally. So uh, they have to be good on gravel now. Yeah, indeed. Well, Adrian Formo currently sitting in third in the Drivers' Championship standings at the moment. It is all about points halls. And remember, it's Super Sunday tomorrow. Bagging points tonight is also all important. We'll get to that as the stages progress. But behind us now is Gregor Munster service. Julian, can you just sort of anything that you see here that you can talk us through? At the moment, we are obviously looking at very regular formatted services, nothing too dramatic. But what is going on from your eye point? So what I see is that on each corner of the car, so each wheel, we have one mechanic that is taking care to check, double check, triple check, uh, all the um, bolts uh, and the, the elements, the, the brakes and everything. Of course, before arriving here, uh, the crew uh, in the car sent uh, a to-do list uh, to, to his engineer. Uh, we had an impact uh, there or there in the, in the dumpers where we might check. Uh, we want to change the springs or the dumpers. All that is part of the to-do list that the chief mechanic will have in his hands. And before the cars uh, arrive in, uh, in, in the service park, they will organize all, the, all this work. Uh, we have also someone inside the car, uh, the lady that is uh, just probably maybe uh, taking care of the cockpit. It can be some really uh, simple or stupid things, but that has a lot of importance, like the belts. Can we uh, um, uh, put an elastic to keep them uh, a bit more open or whatever in case we need to change the wheel during the, 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 the stage? It must be quick and efficient. And we see also that there is someone that dedicated a bit uh, further uh, that is putting the camel bags uh, behind the, the, the seats. And we know that uh, drinking is really, really uh, important for the for the crews. And this is the only water that they, they will carry on during the, the whole, um, the whole um, uh, loop of the afternoon, sorry. Uh, 
So this is all those kind of elements. And uh, uh, of course, the timing is running for all those guys and, uh, and ladies. Um, this is a teamwork. But like you said, for the moment, we don't see any uh, uh, panic or anything. Everyone knows what he has to do. There are some exceptions to, uh, to the rule. For example, if we had to um, work on the fuel system, uh, in this case, um, I don't remember exactly the regulation, but at that point, if you open the fuel system, a pump, a pipe, or anything, um, only one or two persons can work on the, on the car on this topic only. And uh, all the elements uh, must be um, an in standby uh, during this action. So everything's regulated. Every movement is regulated. There's only a certain amount of mechanics that are allowed to work. When they're working, they've got the, the bands around the foot. Every single step of this is planned, forethought. Nothing happens here without an exact planning ahead. Yes, and uh, I was mentioning that the chief mechanic will have a, a briefing with his crew uh, with these uh, mechanics just before the car arrives, and it will be the same when they will have finished the service. And it happens many times because, um, I don't know, we can see that all those guys have this kind of smaller uh, basket, let's say, with all the tools and everything, and they will put uh, back everything there, and if something is missing, a tool or a crew or anything, uh, they will immediately call the, the, the driver and co-driver inside the car because something is missing, and maybe we forget it inside the car, and eventually you have the driver with, uh, I don't know, a hammer uh, in between his foot and the, yeah. and the pedal brake. That's not ideal. So every little detail counts in these moments. It may seem regular, but it is still all so important. All right, well, Bex Williams was down in that media zone, as we've mentioned before. And this time we may as well head into the interview that was done with Gregor Munster. Greg, well, first on the road out there today, the optimum position, because it was the worst for you yesterday, obviously right at the back of the field. You said after the first stage you'd felt you didn't optimise the fact that you had the clean road. Did you feel you did that on the next three? Um, a bit better, like taking a bit more cuts and uh, just being more more confident through the corners because on the first day I was uh, yeah, a bit careful uh, every corner because you don't know what really is going to be the condition and actually yeah, opening the road everything is uh, is all good but uh, I think of course it's good to be on the front but it's not as much uh, an advantage as uh, yesterday as the, the cuts are all bone dry and so uh, not much pollution getting out uh, unless there is like really uh, some gravel uh, from new roads and, uh, and there you can put some stones on the road but otherwise uh, it's pretty dry. It seems that it's going to be a pretty difficult tyre choice decision again this afternoon because we've had a dry morning out there and we're not sure what the weather is going to do. Talk us through the process now of how you make those decisions. Yeah, basically it's uh, getting the information from the from the meteor guy uh, and the weather crew that are in the stage, um, seeing how the conditions are in the stage right now and uh, how the meteor guy's uh, pr his predictions are. And based on that, you, you try to make a, a tyre choice. Of course, in Croatia, it's often uh, a bit mixed so you want to have a mixed package to you won't be perfect uh, everywhere but at least uh, you won't be surprised by the uh, suddenly a big storm or something thank you Thanks. now himself and rich saying basically exactly the same thing it, it, there is no real option you've got to take every tire for every eventuality at this point because it is very difficult to predict what the weather's going to do i mean at the moment it is glorious sunshine it is beautiful it is a perfect spring day out here Yes, and on top of that, there is the quality of the tire you, you want to choose, depending on the conditions, but there is also the quant quantity. <laughs> and uh, you know that you have a certain amount uh, uh, for the whole weekend, starting from the shakedown until the, the very last stage. Here, this is 28 tires for, for, for the WSC1 cars. But among those 28 tires, you cannot pick up 28 uh, soft tires, for example. You have a certain amount also to respect. And if you have uh, an unlucky uh, moment and you have a puncture, then it can destroy completely your strategy for the, for the weekend. So you have to think about all that. And you were mentioning also the Super Sunday and all those points there and there and there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to think about it and to probably also get some fresh tires for the Sunday. Yeah, indeed, because Super Sunday means a whole new new points haul. So whoever is leading the rally at the end of the day on Saturday will bag a full 18 points. There is another haul of points up for grabs, including the, the Wolf Power Stage points 
course as well. So every single moment from here on in really counts in terms of the points because you can secure yourself a good amount of points and then perhaps tackle Sunday however you wish, whether you know, you're know you really chasing such as Thierry or Elvin or maybe with Adrian just trying to bring it home, get a good place, but also get a fair share of points. Yes, and in a way, it reminds me a bit the, the spirit of Sabogier uh, <laughs> when we were in the, in the years 2014, 15, and that we had to open the roads many, many times on gravel, especially of course yeah. when it was difficult to. And we were hesita hesitating on the on the previous rally: should we push ah. and be first on the road for the next gravel event, or should we release a little bit and have a better position on the road? And Seb always said, you know what, uh, we go for the points. Each point uh, counts, and we never know at the end of the of the season. Maybe we will have some regrets not picking up those, those points. So, I guess it's a bit more or less the same spirit we should have here in most of the drivers. Sunday, Saturday, Friday, or Monday, whatever the day, just go for it. I think that's the best pro for my approach. I'd go with that because that's the thing. Can you imagine if you come down to the final rally, the final stages, the final throws in Japan, and you're one point short, and it's all because you didn't push on the day that you thought you wanted a better road position. You definitely got to push all the time. Well, that is what Super Sunday is all about. But what is Adrian Formo all about this afternoon? Bex Williams found out. Adrian, stage win to kick things off this morning. That was pretty special. You almost won that stage in your debut in the World Rally Car a couple of years ago. How did it feel to take that stage win this morning? <laughs> well, I had a, a revenge to do on, the, on that stage. Uh, twice the second fastest time in 21, so I wanted to get it for, for this year. Uh, I'm quite happy with, uh, with, the, with the pace in that one. I was really enjoying. Uh, to be fair, I think we've done a good, uh, good morning, uh, considering playing with the conditions, etc. Some misfire on the last stage. Uh, it's a shame, but uh, I think we have done a good job because we are not so far to the others, uh, even with our issues. So, yeah, I've been quite pushing in, that, in the last one. Yeah, it's only 14 seconds, I think, still now up to Oit. So that's not too far at all to look out for this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, it's still 14 seconds, so it's not so easy. We're going to try to, to keep pushing for sure. Not so easy, uh, but, uh, but yeah, many things can still open, so we never know. We are still close, so if you do a mistake, we're going to take the advantage. What areas do you feel from this morning after going through those stages that you could improve on this afternoon? Well, I think we need to improve is stage two, uh, but uh, I wasn't so confident with the car. The car was rolling too much. The, the setup for, for that one wasn't so good. Uh, it's the only one, to be fair, and for the rest, it was really good. Why was the setup not right for that one? There's a smooth section at the start. Yeah, it's like a secret stage. Yeah. Uh, it's like circuit stage. We have decided to be quite soft this morning, considering the risk of rain, etc. And uh, the car was not precise enough, not reactive enough. Now, Julian, he was talking about the second stage of the day and uh, wanting to make improvements. You're just talking to Matt and Vidaga there. Um, what did you make of his performance through that second stage? We obviously saw him before that, so that was stage 10. He wanted to sort of focus uh, Adrian on those that second stage. So what can he do th this afternoon that's different? Because obviously the stage will be dirtier. What else can he focus on? You know what? When we were staying uh, in between the two stages, this is part of the discussion I had with him. Ah. Uh, saying, hey, uh, Adrian, I remember that's in stage number nine yes. and ten. You had some really good times in 2021 when I did it with uh, Seb for the first time, this rally. And they say, yeah, I, I, I like this stage. And the guys around, I think, uh, it was a monster actually that was here and um, his co-driver and uh, Luca and they said uh, yeah yeah this is his uh, his stage for sure he is so easy uh, so so I mean I don't know so comfortable uh, in, in this one uh, it's funny to, to to see that sometimes some stages should uh, have the name of the, the driver that <laughs> manage uh, this one uh, so so strongly uh, but coming back to what is happening this afternoon I think the last uh, stage of the loop will not get so dirty, but everyone was already complaining that it was with a very low grip uh, level, uh, level of grip. So will it be cleaning or will it be worse? That's uh, the question mark. Then also, what are the last predictions in terms of weather forecast? We, we don't know, but I would not say that this is a very, um, a very demanding, um, I, I would not say demanding uh, loop, but a, a bit less worse than uh, yesterday. The first stage will be bumpy and with some deep cuts and quite technical. So you ask the car to have uh, certain uh, ability and skills, uh, maybe higher in ride height and uh, stuff like this. And the three other ones, uh, a bit more clean. 
Okay, all right. Well, we have now ourselves repositioned. We're in Hyundai there. You just saw Cyril a beautiful walking past. It is all a go here. We've got two of the three cars that are going to be coming in for their service. So it uh, is Andreas Mickelson and then Ois Tanak that are in at the moment. Of course, our rally leader Thierry Nouvel will be the last of the cars in. What have you spotted around here? What have you seen around here? Again, a very regular service, a bit more of a hive of activity than at M Sport because they only had uh, the two cars coming in. Another a third car adds an additional amount of chaos. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? On each car, you have four people dedicated, and they wear this uh, thing, this uh, the bracelet on the bracelet ankle, yeah. around, the, around the, you know, you know that. Uh, well, we should probably a... think of a less less girly term for the bracelet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I agree that we should have uh, uh, like a Louis Vuitton one. <laughs> Could be nice. Um, yeah, you can see that there is no stress, no rush. Here we are touching about the brakes, so maybe we are changing the, the pads, maybe we are changing the, the discs themselves. We're going to witness that very quickly. So we remove the disc right now. So you see, this is an action that is very quick to, to, to do. Um, we replace with a new one. And of course, because the, the, um, the driver will have all those brakes new on the car, uh, he will have to warm them a bit and to get used to, to, to them. So sh we should see on his uh, steering wheel a small sticker written a uh, new pads, new disc ah, okay. that will just remind him to um, maybe make some a certain process of uh, breaking on the, on the road section to the first stage. OK, all right. Well, we were just catching a glimpse also while you were talking about uh, this change here of Sebastian Auger. A good morning once again for him, holding on to that position, still breathing down the neck of Elvin Evans and Thierry Neuville. <laughs> yeah, I was mentioning this morning that I will not wish to have the breath of uh, <laughs> Sebastian Auger uh, on my neck. And uh, he's uh, hungry, uh -huh. definitely. He needs, uh, he needs some victories, but there are some guys fighting for the championship also and decided to score the maximum points uh, of uh, the, this uh, first part of the rally tonight. Um, what to say about Seb? Maybe we will have a look uh, to his car when we will be later uh, on in, in, uh, in Toyota's uh, area. And here we have... Now our eyes a, a are more, just a more, a more with... Change on the, with Toyota at the moment. This oh, yes, is sorry. their service that you can see just there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just having a look at all the details that are moving through the Hyundai cars and the Toyota cars as well. Right, well, while we're having a look at the services unfold, let's listen in to the interview with the man himself, the man we've been talking about, Sebastian Auger. Seb, early start this morning, and we were all expecting, as predicted by a lot of people, a completely different day out there today. It's been very similar weather-wise to yesterday, maybe minus the snow. Not what you were expecting, <laughs> though, no? Yeah, we expected a bit more uh, humidity coming out at some point. Um, we expected the start of the day dry, yes, but then uh, there was some shower, uh, which were predicted, which didn't happen. Uh, yeah, therefore... I think all of us had anticipated uh, some, some change in the setup and on our side, unfortunately, it didn't work so well then uh, on the dry. I, I couldn't have the same feeling as I had yesterday and was missing a little bit of pace, but, but still it was okay, I would say, uh, on the two first stage. Uh, unfortunately, I had a big moment on the stage three uh, with uh, a very, I don't know, surprising uh, kick from the rear of the car and I lost it uh, at the entry of a corner. Had a massive oversteer and uh, nearly, uh, yeah, just, just nearly quite uh, didn't manage to catch it and hit a bit the barrier on the inside, damaged my front bumper. Cost a bit of time, a little bit of aero to the end of the, of the loop. On top of that, I had to drive the last stage also with um, wet tires on the car because one of my soft was having some tread uh, damage and uh, I didn't want to take the risk to have a puncture so that cost me also a little bit of time so didn't lose much but uh, too much still so let's hope we can do better this afternoon. Obviously another big tyre choice because we're still not sure if we are going to see rain this afternoon. 
talk us through the process because I think you mentioned at one of the stage ends it was your choice this morning with what yeah. tyres you had on the car. So how do you come to this decision? How many people are involved in this decision, Seth? Oh, a lot for sure. I mean, all the, the, the team, the engineer made some calculation. The, 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 of course, the forecaster, they are the one we listen a lot. And the thing is, they are very uncertain at, in this moment because the weather here is developing so quickly, it looks like. So it, the, the last info we got this morning was be prepared for every condition. So, yeah, thank you. But what do we do with that? <laughs> so, no, I think at the end we did the right call. I think the tire choice was correct. Uh, and uh, we optimized as much as we could with this one hard. It was helping on the dry. But still, we were missing a little bit of performance. And even with full soft, uh, Cherry was able to go a bit faster. So means uh, we need to uh, yeah, try to find something for, for this afternoon. Obviously, this afternoon is, is critical in terms of the new point system now at the end of the day, Saturday. What's the strategy from you this afternoon? <sighs> same, same. <laughs> just, just flat out, just do our best and try to finish as high as we can. Uh, uh, I mean, there is no strategy whatsoever. Uh, uh, it never happened with Toyota, it will not happen now and uh, we just need uh, Elvin and me uh, to keep pushing and try to catch Cherry. Well, an awful lot to take away from that. Bex Williams did her best investigative reporting there. So, first of all, I do like the fact that Sebastian Ogier is not talking about Evans. He's talking about the time that he dropped to Thierry, which shows you exactly where his mind is, that he's taking the top guy out of the picture, not, not anyone in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, if Evans is listening to, to that, it might not be so 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 nice to, to hear neither. Um, yeah, the, the target is clear. We know Seb, we're not going to repeat that. So only the victory yeah. counts for him. And I guess for all those guys uh, here. Um, we were mentioning that he had some moment, that he had to change his tyre because... I mean, you talked about that a little bit already, the fact that he had to put the wet tyre on, and he also had a pretty big moment. Yeah, he's lucky to be to be here, indeed. Um, and if we are watching his car, we see that no, so, not so much damage are, are here. And we were speaking just previously about the disc brakes. And I'm happy to see that at Toyota, they are using some old Euro coins, it seems, to build there, to melt and to build there disc brakes. So you see we have a very um, easy access to all those, uh, all those parts. You can change the disc brake very uh, easily within those four uh, bolts. The disc pads, uh, the brake pads are of course are into the caliper. And here you have some uh, kind of scrapers that will uh, avoid some stones uh, that are inside the, the rim to uh, come uh, into the, this system and eventually break a, a pipe or a part. OK, and a swift out the way because still a, a lot of working. But thank you for getting so up and close to show us some more of the detail there. Now, with all of that trouble, only 11.3 off for Thierry and 6.6 .6 off Elvin. He talked about the weather, and I think I like that for a weather prediction. Basically, be ready for anything. And it is so true because while we were standing out there, the rain was coming. It was freezing cold. It seemed like that weather was going to completely change. The whole environment was changing around us. And then all of a sudden, as we got back in the car ourselves, the skies lifted and the sun was not there, but it was warming up again. So I think, like he said, like, like Adrian Formo said, like Rich said, take all. <laughs> Yes, take all, but not all the teams did so. Uh, for example, uh, Hyundai didn't take some hard tires, it seems. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe we have uh, somewhere some very specialists that are able to tell me when it was and uh, with which car and, uh, and where. But I don't remember when a car, a crew, had some soft tires, wet tires and hard tires at the same time in the car. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. question mark. Yeah, there'll be somebody out there that knows exactly the answer to that. OK, well, we are working our way through the interviews at the moment. Of course, we are at Toyota. We've got Elvin Evans and we've also got Thierry Neuville to go to. So let's have a listen in now to that Elvin Evans interview that Bex Williams did a bit earlier on. He's currently sitting in second. So how does he feel about the afternoon? Elvin is second position heading into midpoint service on Saturday. 4.7 seconds. It's not a lot of time. Obviously, more time than what we started the day with. How are you feeling about the way it's gone this morning? I'm feeling generally OK. Of course, disappointed mostly with the last stage uh, to give away uh, quite a chunk to, to Thierry. Um, but of course, it turns around quickly in, in this type of rally, so we have to keep at it. Different tyre strategy as well from you in, in comparison to Thierry. You had one hard, three softs, two wet this morning. The fact that he had more softs, do you think it made a difference? 
uh, not so much in the end. Uh, I don't think it, it seemed to make a huge difference. Maybe in this last one where it was very low grip. Did he find a bit of extra confidence? I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't think it made a huge difference. I was just saying to Thierry, incredibly small margins out there. You both set a, a joint time earlier on. It's so close. Is that exhilarating to be part of? Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, it'd be exhilarating if I was on the other side of it, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's been good. <laughs> And again, we're going into midpoint service and I'm sure everyone's going to be scratching their heads looking at the skies because no one can seem to predict right now where this rain is, if it's actually going to fall. So difficult tyre choice this afternoon. Uh, yeah, it seems seems to still be the case. So uh, put our faith in the weatherman and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Obviously, you've got your, your safety note crew out there giving you all the details, the meteor crews around. How much information, how many people are helping to make a decision on the tyres for you? Uh, of course, there's uh, a few people in in every stage from the team, and then we've got the RNC, and then of course the guys back at service, working hard behind the scenes, running all the the calculations as well. So I'd say there's quite a few. Big afternoon because, of course, points are handed out at the end of Saturdays now in the new point structure. More pressure now to push harder this afternoon. Uh, I think yes, of course, uh, it's important, but um, at the same time we're we're going pretty well already I think uh, so it's a case of keeping up the, the speed making a few small corrections perhaps where we weren't so good this morning and uh, and yeah see if we can keep it up which places where you say you weren't so good this morning what can be improved uh, it's just a couple of splits here and there uh, first one of the first stage for example wasn't so, so good for us so uh, there's, there's easy time uh, giveaway there it seems so we need to try and rectify that now for the second class. I have to say the Elvin Evans brain must be quite sizable because the notes are relentless there's a lot of information especially here in Croatia for you to take in it's quite incredible to listen to. Yeah there's a lot but uh, yeah I don't know it's always difficult to know what's the right balance between having the information you need to place the car exactly where you want it and, and actually being able to, to take it all in. Uh, normally when the stages are a bit known you can afford a little bit more information so uh, it's normally like that <laughs> there we go a few splits a few things here and there to improve on the margins are very fine between himself and Thierry Neuville at the moment so it's going to be interesting to see if he can find that fine margin and take Thierry the afternoon in the afternoon because as Bex was saying the points are all important points will be secured on Saturday night we move into Super Sunday and it's a new haul of points Evans in terms of the drivers championship he needs more than Thierry that's the, that's the end of it <laughs> Yes, and this is the, um, the moment to, to make a break also for, for, for Thierry. If he scores some big points here, he yes. will have. Uh, okay, he will have to face the first position uh, in a Rally Portugal, the, the next one. So we spoke about it. Gravel is uh, another story, but. Here with us uh, standing so far. Yeah, so Thierry Neuville is out in front. It's 4.7 seconds ahead of Elvin. Elvin just there talking about those fine margins. Can he make up the 4.7? Now Sebastian Auger, 11.3 off the top. It's just 6.6 .6 separating himself and Elvin Evans. Then it's Oitanak in fourth. Adrian Formo in fifth. Taka in sixth. It's Mickelson that's in seventh. And uh, Gregoire Munster in eighth. In terms of WRC2, it's Gryzen and Russell that sit in the top two. They round out at ninth and tenth position. So that's how how it looks. Now, in terms of the Drivers' Championship, Thierry Neuville has six more points to Elvin Evans. At the moment, he is leading this rally. If he finishes up tonight in the lead, he will take more points. He goes into Super Sunday even stronger in the Drivers' Championship. It means the pressure will really be on for Elvin Evans. So this afternoon's work for Elvin is all important. Thierry, breathe. have you seen the power stage? <laughs> yeah, also, breathe first. But have you seen the power stage? I can tell you that this is not over at all. And mm. uh, this is so narrow, so bumpy, and uh, even the stage before, all the stages are, are really uh, tricky. What I mean is that as a former co-driver, I cannot follow you, you know, uh, speaking about the points already and uh, all those things. Um, no, no, here we are. We have to make the good, de the good decisions, still ah. make again those perfect uh, copies of the stages of, the, of, the, of this morning. Uh, the small correction, the, probably uh, right now in, uh, on those levels, uh, uh, in the driver's room, they are uh, eating and working at the same time on the, on the, on the videos and the paste notebooks, adjusting the very last uh, small details in, uh, in the paste note to be just absol absolutely perfect. Once again, we have all the uh, caravan of gravel crew that are passing, uh, uh, that is passing in, uh, through the stages. How do you get the information by phone, by uh, WhatsApp with the runner, and so on and so on? So this is. 
you know what? Here, this is full, full, full of pressure. We have seen uh, just the main engineer of, uh, of Hyundai, uh, Mark de Jong. Uh, Mark de Jong. That's one of us. <laughs> we have one yeah. of them. <laughs> okay. uh, that, was, uh, that was here and uh, that he's in charge to coordinate everything to be sure that, for example, if we look at those tires just being behind me, it looks easy. Yeah, just pick up those tires and fill it into the into the car. Yeah. Yeah, but be, car be careful because uh, all those tires have some barcodes. Yes. Uh, and if you pick up the wrong one, you might be uh, penalized at one point uh, by the FIA. So everything counts. Well, I think that's you know such. A, we're talking about fine margins for a driver, for a co-driver, but in fact, for every single element of every team, fine margins really just do affect every single person. We've seen it in top flight of all areas of motorsport. Just the smallest mistake can change a champion can change a podium position so every single person now although it looks very relaxed is very organized very calculated very ready and prepared for these moments that have unfold in service yes um, what I want to say is um, everything is organized and at the same time this is a human adventure and we are facing yeah. we have seen it all the unpredictable situation so our job as a co-driver as an engineer as a team is to prepare everything as we can uh, in terms of what is possible to imagine all the situations and then at one point uh, you will have to improvise and to adapt uh, this is the perfect skills of the cruise uh, in rally compared to other sport, motorsport, I, I think. Yeah, indeed. All right. Well, we've still got a few more of those interviews to get through. Thierry Nouveau's service well underway and leading at Rally Croatia at the moment. Let's listen in to the interview that Bex did with him and find out how he is feeling ahead of another big afternoon in Croatia. Thierry in the lead of the rally, really interesting morning again, a fantastic time out there on the final stage, which we'll talk about in a moment, but I want to hear about your morning overall. How would you say it's gone? Yeah, it went well. Um, obviously fighting a bit with a dirty road uh, this morning, but uh, um, somehow a better feeling than yesterday, so I was able to attack a bit more and uh, towards the end of the loop actually attack very hard because... Uh, those are really short stages, we know them very well and uh, it's just, yeah, the small differences which, uh, which actually make a difference even if it's never really big. But uh, if you make the smallest mistakes or just have just are a little bit too slow in one corner, obviously you can't make the fastest time. So we made it, uh, we got it right, um, but it was a proper charge. Yeah, we even saw again you and Elvin set exactly the same time on one of the stages. It just shows how fierce it is between you. Like I said, small margins, hardly any margin. Yeah, 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 there's any margin. I mean, at the end, uh, we were capable of pulling a bit away because uh, I think we attacked very, very hard and the car was working well, but also uh, I think we managed quite well our tyres um, over the, in the overall loop and uh, that paid off. Tire choice was tricky this morning, again this afternoon. What led you to the tire choice this morning, first of all? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I follow a bit my feeling, and obviously, we had some information which were slightly different than what we actually got uh, as conditions. But uh, I think generally, yeah, I, I felt like this was the best compromise for me with my road position as well. The road would be dirty, and I also feel comfortable driving like this. You mentioned at the previous stage end that, which was 9.11 kilometers yeah. in length, that if you won it for a second time, a friend would buy a Porsche 911. Yeah. This friend's obviously got a lot of money, first and foremost. <laughs> Who is this friend, Thierry? The Duval? friend is my co driver. So, uh, yeah, Martin told me during Reiki, uh, listen, uh, this stage is 9.11 Ks. If you do two times uh, the fastest time, I'm going to buy my, my first uh, 911. So, obviously, I, I did what I could. Um, it worked on the first loop and hopefully, cross fingers, it's going to work on the second loop as well. Well, yeah, forget about the win right now. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's getting the fastest yeah, yeah, time yeah, on this no, stage. No, no. There are more important things to play for. <laughs> what is the strategy with regard to that? This afternoon, obviously, su Saturday points now. It's changed this year. What are you thinking? Uh, I would say avoid the punctures and, uh, yeah, continue attacking. I mean... It's a close fight. Um, Elfin, uh, my main championship contender, uh, right behind. So there's nothing else we can do. 
Yeah, Elvin is your main rival right now. That Drivers Championship battle, I think, will roll on. Well, what's happening in WRC2 at the moment? Because the battle is always ripe there. Let's take a look. It is Nikolai Gryazen that's leading. It's a big and comfortable lead. However, Johan Russell was feeling more comfortable through those stages this morning. 59.9 separates them at the moment, but it'll be interesting to see how much Johan can pull back throughout this afternoon. Sami Payari then in third. Gus Greensmith is in fourth, not scoring points in this round, but is in fourth. But Nikolai Gryzin is the man leading the pack at the moment. So let's listen in to his interview to find out how he's feeling. Nikolai, you've set amazing pace so far here at Rally Croatia. You seem to be at one with the rally. How much risk are you taking out there? I cannot say uh, risking that much. Uh, for sure, uh, uh, there's some risk anytime. It's, um, it can be the, the risk on the stages because they are narrow. There's some cuts which you need to take, otherwise you will not get to the corner. You never know how the stone will lay down there. So this is the question also of fortune. So so far so good. I'm doing good. No uh, mistakes. Uh, good. Have a good luck. And uh, so I, I hope everything keep like this and we do our job in the best way. Uh, you are doing good in the morning. So it's not easy to 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 keep the pace, but um, he helped me on the last stage a little bit, so I, I'm a little bit relaxed, but uh, still uh, the race go on. We have like, more one and a half days, so we just need to keep focus. We were all gasping this morning when we saw that you didn't take any wet weather tyres in your package, but that was obviously the right choice this morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that mostly people trying to just to have some wet in case of the wet is come, but from the forecast, it's forecast it was possibility but low and if it's possibility it will be drizzle so I decide just to take the softs if it happens it happens so I just try to to survive with the soft on the rain but as I told it maybe will be drizzle now on the second pass we don't know <laughs> well good luck this afternoon thank, thank you, you. Well, somewhere in this service park, their weather crew are going to be sniffed out and may, <laughs> maybe taken by another team at the moment. They made the right choice. Those are the, the tyres that you can see of uh, Nikolai Gryas and there. But it, it worked for him. He's got a solid, solid lead at the moment. I mean, anything can happen, like we're saying, Johan Russell pushing, but it's a comfortable, good place to be in. Yes, and the battle is going on in between the, the two guys. Um, I wanted to be here in uh, Hyundai just to show you something else, Kiri. Uh, you know that this is a sum guard. And just to give you an idea of how big it is, it's, of course, longer than me. And this one is a rear sum guard. Uh, so it will come up indeed on the, on the back of the car. And we see some kind of uh, aero um, uh, profile, um, small things, wings. And it will uh, allow to um, probably uh, cool down some parts of the, of, the, of the car. We have also the front sum guard that is here made out of uh, carbon, Kevlar, and stronger material like, uh, like this one. And here, this is precisely the, the place where we can fit some ballast on the car. You know that there is a, a minimum weight to, 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 to have uh, in terms of regulations. And uh, if you can put the, the ballast and the weight the lowest possible on the car, of course, it will give a, a better gravity uh, center and a better, better efficiency on, uh, on the road. So this is why we can adjust the thickness of this some guard depending on how rough the rally is. For example, if we go in uh, Greece or Sardinia, we will have some big rocks, some big impacts, so we will have a, a thicker um, some guards. And if ever we have a thinner one, we can still move on all those uh, ballast here uh, in some different places, just compared to the feeling of the driver, what he prefers. Yeah, indeed. And so that is some of the insight that you can share with us, some things that we would never know unless you were here. Now it is getting rather noisy in here, which means that they should be in their final throws of their service. It should be the water. Getting, getting rather noisy in here, which means they're getting towards the final throws of their service. Yes. Um, we were not here when they changed it, but I don't know if they, they changed um, a diff or a gearbox or something or just some other part. But you, you see that they are trying all the gears right now just to check that everything is working before, of course, the, the, the car is leaving. And this is why I was um, 
somehow always uh, wishing that we leave the service park, I mean the service bay, uh, maybe 20, uh, 25 seconds before our um, due time, because you never know if something is missing, if something is wrong, you can still have time to just say to the, to the guys, hey, something is wrong, they plug the, um, the, the, the computer and maybe check something at the very last moment. Um, we see that indeed the tire, the spare tires are hidden, not anymore, <laughs> <laughs> and are set, uh, put in the, inside the car at the, at the very last moment to, to keep the secret compared to all the other spies that are around. We know that there are some Toyota and M Sport guys just among the fans behind the, the car just trying Tell to check that. Tell me something, because there are there's sort of uh, spies, spotters, whatever you want to call them, mm. from each team and also a lot of WRC2 guys send guys out as well to see what the top guys are doing, just to deem information. When was there a situation where you had somebody come back to you and say, well, listen, so-and-so has taken something completely different to you. Did you ever change based on that information? <laughs> Good question. Uh, first, to come back to the uh, smaller car, I will say uh, WRC3 juniors and so on, they don't have weather crew guys in, inside the, the stage. They don't have uh, uh, the knowledge and the, the experience. So for sure, we are a good help for them. Uh, Unfortunately, we were quite often uh, with Seb in, in front of the, of the field, yeah. opening the road, so we had to count only on ourselves. And Seb is not the, the kind of people that um, change will change his mind, his mind yeah. because he has seen uh, something else. I remember uh, in Monte Carlo, in between two stages, we did stop, and Yari Mati Latvala was uh, with us at Volzagan at those time, and we were, I don't know, changing the right side of the car, and Yari Mati, Jean-Marie, uh, is watching us, and he comes to Seb, Seb, but you, you are changing the... The, the setup of your car, yeah, yeah, we he just took the, his phone, Yarimati, and called his engineer, and suddenly he just jumped on, the, on his car and started <laughs> to, to change it, everything. So he didn't stick ready to his plan. Yeah. I don't know if it works or, or not, but yes, we, with us, we never really changed our, our mind. You had a plan and stuck to it. Well, it definitely worked, didn't it? OK, well, what's coming up this afternoon? We've got a plan for you to stick to for your Saturday afternoon at 2.30 at stage 13 and at 3.24 it's stage 14. At 5 o'clock it's stage 15 and at 6.01 it's stage 16. Remember, tonight the points will be bagged. So after stage 16, we will know whether Thierry has got the full points haul of Saturday and uh, what the plan will be for those guys moving into Super Sunday. So that is all that is coming up for you this afternoon. Plenty more action. Are you ready for it? I'm ready for it, but we will know if uh, Thierry can score the maximum point on the Super Saturday or Saturday normal only on Sunday evening if he, if he finishes the rally. Only. Yeah, indeed. This is the condition. So the points, what Julian's saying is so that if either if you get the points secured on Saturday, they are not guaranteed. You have to finish at the rally. The Super Sunday points are just an additional bonus. So that is all coming your way. The points, the stages and everything else that goes with it. But from us in the service, it's goodbye just for a second.